hey there people. Well, it's Monday afternoon here on the old vlog and life show. I wasn't going to make a video today, but there's two things that made me want to make a video. Uh, number one is I'm chatting with my, my friend online, Shane, and he posted a thing about a uh, boy carrying toy gun shot dead by police. And the kid was walking around with a, I like to call him in Canada, a gray area airsoft gun. See, in Canada, we have a rule about airsoft that's been passed two years ago. Uh, let me explain the rule, and then I'll carry on. So the rule is simply, you must have an orange tip on the end of the firearm, and the action portion must be transparent so you can see that it can't fire bullets. It only fires plastic BBs. Okay, this looks like... What the hell stuck to it? Flying Sam Hell fuck. Anyway, this looks like a real firearm complete with mag release and everything like you press the button on the side and the mag comes out looks like a real firearm this thing weighs the same amount as a real Beretta except for it's plastic look you can tell you can see down the barrel there's no way that thing can fire a bullet if I were to take this gun and put it on a cop like that all they're gonna see is the barrel and they're gonna have to make the decision blast me or call it an airsoft rifle or an airsoft pistol really hard to tell unless I'm like bang on. Like if I got the gun pointed down a bit or up a bit, you can't really tell the barrel. All you can see is the metal and you got to make that call. Very easily can this pistol be used to get yourself into a lot of trouble if not dead. And that's what happened to that boy. These, like right now, this one here is gray area. Like I've already talked to the officers about it. I, I showed them a picture of the M4, the M16, and the uh, not the ball pup, for sakes, the, um, I showed them this a while back because I was asking about bringing them out into the woods and using, like, target practice because shooting them in the backyard, yeah, that would work, but if I can take them away from the public and just go and fire them off into the woods somewhere and not be bothered, less chance of people calling the cops and, you know, having the cops show up for a reason that's not even valid because I'm shooting a BB gun in the backyard. But because of the way they looked, that's what I asked the cops, like, you know, if I fire these in my backyard, how much trouble am I going to get into? And they're like, well, because of what they are, I wouldn't recommend doing it try and shoot them in a place where your neighbors won't see it so we don't get a false call about somebody firing a fully automatic weapon because well you've all seen Mr. Airsoft Ponage and you've seen the kind of damage that those things can do kind of like the damage I'm about to do to my underwear <laughs> oh yeah not exactly a toy and for the kid to have this like you're asking for trouble and even on the picture like even on the picture you can see the barrel like from this angle you can totally see the barrel and you can see the uh, the silver inline where the BB travels. So that was at the officer's discretion. Now a lot of people are making a humbug over this, but honestly, you aim this at a cop and they have to decide on the fly, are you a threat or not? And if the cop can't tell, the cop's going to call you a threat. He's going to throw orders. If the kid didn't listen and the kid got shot, well, I, I have to put that on the parents. It's up to the parents to teach the kids how to respect firearms and make sure they understand that this is not a freaking toy and I'm totally not holding this right you should be holding it like that you know and probably with the safety on and shit now I have it on but still um there's no ammo in it there's no gas in it either this here should never be a toy you know like when we were kids we used to go play guns out in the woods we had tons of plastic guns I even had one that looked like this it was a uh, M4, no, sorry, no, no, that's a machine gun, or a rifle, uh, I had the uh, 1911, the 1911 like this, but it wasn't airsoft, it was just a gun, but it had the mag release, and all that nonsense, but it wasn't a, um, an airsoft, it was just a toy gun, that was super realistic, but it had the inside of the barrel all painted orange, the inside, so... I don't know, it was pretty neat, pretty cool, pretty cool pistol I had, but uh, that's friggin' horse shit that this happened, and that's because some adult, because you know they didn't buy this toy for their kid, well they could've, I don't know, I didn't read the whole article, all I know is it read that the toy, the, the kid was shot from carrying a toy gun now, uh, it's from Huffington Post, they're usually pretty accurate and not posting spam. So we'll let it go this time. I won't bother Snopes in them. Yeah, like I could easily, if I was an officer and somebody yanked one of these on me, I'd have to make the call. Like, are they drawing a real pistol? Am I going to get shot or is somebody else going to get shot? That's the real question. That's why, like, whenever I use the airsoft rifles, I don't like using them in the backyard because I don't need my neighbors calling the cops on me thinking I'm firing off a fully automatic rifle in my backyard. Even though when they hear the thing fire, it's a joke. 
You know, it's like fap 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 fap, and that totally sounded like a guy just tugging on it. But still, it's like it's not a big deal. It's just, oh my god, why do I get the farts today? Tonight's gonna be an awesome night at work. But uh, you know, I just don't understand why parents would think airsoft rifles are a good choice for a gun for their kid. Like you don't just buy them the gun and say, now go outside and play with Timmy. Because they're gonna both get shot. But ah uh, well, to each their own, eh? I still gotta fix my airsoft. My uh, I found a site. Actually, my buddy was showing me it. He had to replace the action on his uh, M16 because it was jammed up like the one on my M4A1. Uh, he showed me what to look for and how to take apart the action and see if the gears are stripped. And he's like, chances are the gears are stripped because you ran Walmart fucking BBs through it. And the problem with Walmart BBs is they're not always round. And they tend to be shaped like an egg. And if it gets in there right, it'll be a bitch to push. And what will happen is the gear will have to work against it or some nonsense, like trying to bring it up into the action. And then when it fires, it just wears out the, uh, the nylon gearing in it. So he said if you get a, a stage 3, it's got metal internals, less of a chance of it um, bunging up. And it's also higher throwing power, so you get your gun up to like 500 feet per second and shit, and that's when things get real. So apparently it's like 35 bucks for the new action, and like I'm not sure if I really care, because how often do I use the airsoft rifles? Like I don't really go out and play much, even though we have a field in town now apparently. Uh, my buddy Dave was telling me about it, uh, where the old M&B paintball, well, sorry, not where the old M&B paint, where M&B paintball is, they have paintballing and airsoft, and that is freaking awesome so you know if I did have the guns all working I want to convert them like if I decided I want to get into it I would convert all the guns into airsoft uh, lithium ion instead of having the airsoft uh, right now it's nickel metal hydride I believe I'm using or even worse no I think they're the nickel metal hydride batteries but uh, I want to convert them to lithium ion main reason being is they'd be faster charging and throw more power and I find lithium ion batteries last longer than nickel metal hydride for some reason that and the no memory effect is kind of attractive too but that's one of those things I, I can put on the back burner for as long as I want because I don't really need them right now I don't need those guns working I still got the bull the bullpup rig the uh, Steyr AUG it still works but uh, the M4 and the M16 are both down for the count until I get around to buy new actions for them and bring them back and as for the uh, Bang Bang Beretta all I need is some green gas and or propane and silicone lube and I could fill that up with green gas and then rock and roll. Uh, a lot of people do that, they buy the little green cans of propane and you get this adapter for the top that you just spray some silicone in there and you can fill up your, your uh, gas blowback guns for dirt dirt cheap which is nice. So that's all I need to do then the Beretta's up and running. I've never shot the Beretta yet so it's probably a pretty awesome feeling. I just haven't gotten around to getting any green gas or uh, the propane attachment for the uh, the bottle so I can use the propane. But uh, yeah, yeah, freaking awesome. Oh, see, so do you guys, oh my goodness, my hands are so slippery because they're covered in vegetable glycerin because I just mixed up a bottle of snot. But uh, do you guys remember all that snow that I showed you outside and stuff? Well, Get ready, because uh, this is kind of crazy. This is pretty ridiculous. It's all friggin' gone. Because currently outside, it's plus 10 degrees Celsius, and the snow just couldn't stick around to deal with it. My goodness, where did all the snow go? Well, it's a wet one out, so get ready for some windshield wiper action, friggin' driving to work vlog mode, because that's what exactly this is gonna be. Unfortunately. Alright, let's do this. Oh, it's pretty funny. I put a link, or a link, a comment up on Facebook, or status update anyway, talking about how most of the snow is gone. Like, I need to turn the wipers on full balls because this is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> my buddy's like, he sends me pictures of uh, his camp where he was this weekend, and he's like, <laughs> he has a picture of his Dodge there. And, He's like, yeah, I couldn't even keep this. I couldn't even keep her going straight. Like, I kept pulling to the left or the right and stuff. And, like, I couldn't bring it to myself to totally one pug the guy and be like, well, that's because you drive a Dodge and it's impossible to keep a Dodge stra driving straight and narrow. But I was like, I'll let him go this time. I'll let him think that he has a, a good product. You know, it's an old 19, maybe, a, no, I think it's a 2003 Dodge Ram. And, uh, like, I've only ever driven. 
Well, I've driven Jules's caravan for like a really, really short distance, and it didn't feel too bad. And like Adrian drives Dodge, and I never hear him complain about ghost steering or anybody else complain about it who drives a Dodge. So maybe it's just a big joke. I don't know, but uh, it could be the older one that he, my buddy has has the ball joint trouble because it is that era that had that problem. You know what I need to stop doing? It's coming this way to go to work because of this great big fucking crevasse over here that they made and that they haven't fixed yet. I was hoping for a great big snowfall that would pack this all in with junk, but they just haven't fixed it yet. I don't know if this is like North Bay's new style speed bump or what. Like, let's just put a random crater in the ground that makes you drop big time so you can't go super speed over it. Everybody thinks it's construction, but meanwhile it's just a slowdown before you hit this stoplight because you wouldn't believe how many people run this thing. Even though it's got a great big solar powered flashing red light above it, people just say friggin' blow right through it. They don't care. But you put a little speed bump right after it, people are like, oh well I better not go mock chicken through there because I'm just going to have to slow down anyway. And the people who don't slow down, they're the ones who end up like, you know, losing their suspension and stuff because it's a pretty big hole back there. It's at least a good 3-4 inch drop. Well, I got a busy night ahead of me tonight, oh my goodness. I got uh, around five to six vlogs on this camera that have to be edited and uploaded to YouTubes. I'm so stupid sometimes. But yeah, I got like five or six vlogs on this thing. I got to render up, got to cut and edit and upload to YouTubes. Um, plus I got a whole shitload of scaven game stuff that I got to upload to YouTubes. Oh, I wish I had Bell Fiber Op. It would make uploading to YouTube so much quicker. At least five times quicker. Nope, uh, 10 times quicker. Nope, 15 times quicker. Apologize. Oh, that number just got, that escalated quickly right there. I don't care what anybody says. That escalated quickly. I went from five to 15, that's like a three time multiplier. Because right now I have a two megabit up and the uh, Bell Fiber Op is 30 megabit up, which would really, really help with getting these videos up to YouTube's. But they got all the wires wrapped around the post just at the bottom of my house and they still haven't gotten around to firing them up the road so I can have fiber. Also yesterday between editing up all the friggin' Skaven Games footage I had, that's what I wasted Sunday on, that's why I didn't make a vlog yesterday, was um, uh, anyway Rex, uh, he got himself a new camera for uh, romping season when we get around to romping season. Mind you, he can romp in the fields behind his house because he's got that sled now, so that's a bonus. But uh, for romping season, he bought himself a new camera off of a buddy who, same story as my GoPro Hero 2, there was a guy who tried moto vlogging and just decided he didn't like it and um, wanted to help a buddy out, so he sold the uh, his, his moto vlogging camera to Rex. Well, the moto vlogging camera Rex has doesn't use your conventional SD cards, which is, you know, mainly what we us videographers have is SD cards. You don't really buy the micros because mainly like up until now, micro SD was something you stuck in your tablet or your cell phone. You didn't really use them on cameras very often. But now a lot more and more cameras are using micro SD just basically to keep a smaller body and, uh, you know, keep the weight down even though an SD card versus a micro SD, you know, what is there, like maybe, maybe a milligram of difference in weight, you know, a couple more ounces of plastic, not even. So he needed one. Well, I got my discount at the source and I get 20% off memory cards. So I was like, well, fuck, why don't we just buy you a brand new one and I'll get, use my discount. Well, that turned out to be a real horror show because they couldn't find me in the freaking system. That was fun. So they're like looking all over. Apparently, my name and my account falls under Bell BC. Yeah, Bell British Columbia, I guess. Apparently that's what Bell does with new employees that they don't plan on keeping, I guess. I don't know, because uh, when I was chat chatting with a co-worker who used it, mind you, he's on the I'm staying list. Basically, uh, he was under Bell N. He had to look under Bell N and found himself. I'm under Bell BC. But sure enough, the discount worked because I got the 20% off the cards. Uh, they're a regular, well, they're on for $29 a piece and I got them for $24 after tax. So it should have been, what, $34.50 a piece and I picked them up for $24 taxes in. 
I bought one as well because I want it for uh, my cell phone. Right now I'm running my cell phone on internal memory. And being a 16 gig uh, Samsung Galaxy, uh, between all the pictures I take and some of the music I have on there and stuff, it's just kind of sort of killing the storage. So I, that's why I bought one because I kind of don't want to kill my storage. So 32 gigs in the phone, pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, got to use my discount for a friend. It's freaking awesome. Like. I don't really buy much technology anymore because, well, especially from the source, because I find their prices, like what they charge for something, even with my discount, anybody can just go to Walmart and buy it, you know? Like, it's not exactly awesome sauce. But I think the funniest thing going on with this whole Bell Alliant nonsense, or Bell nonsense, is they have people coming in and sitting with us trying to figure out all our processes. And I mentioned this before, I can't remember if I mentioned it on a vlog or to Rex, but they're completely kerfuffled with us. Mainly because they don't understand our job as a help desk. See, Bell Help Desk, you have your internet dicks, your telephone dicks, your Bell satellite dicks, and, you know. They each have their own job and each do their own thing. Well, over at our office, good old Bell Alliant on Terra, our help desk does everything. We do phones, we do circuits, we do uh, wireless, we do everything. We, we do telephone features, we do, you know, circuit repairs, internet repair, internet troubleshooting, computer troubleshooting. We do everything. We're not a specialized department. We're just, uh, whatever product we offer, we'll figure it out and we'll troubleshoot it type thing. Best effort friggin' help desk, pretty much, if you want to go that route. And uh, it's kind of throwing Bell for a loop. And what's hilarious was apparently last weekend, or last weekend, for sakes, last week the Bell, uh, Bell guys were in trying to figure out how to do our job, and uh, they wanted to sit with one of the guys who's leaving, so when, uh, so they said, they're like, okay, well, we're going to monitor you today and see how you do your job, and Buddy's like, well, seeing how I'm on the cut list, uh, no, you're not going to sit with me and ask me how I do my job. Why don't you go sit with one of the guys who's actually staying with the company? Like, they actually expect us to train them how to do our job, meanwhile we're losing our job. But they expect us to teach them how to do it. Like, are they fucking stupid? I'm just waiting for the day that they bring in technicians and make them sit with us and make us teach them how to do our jobs. Like, if they're gonna have somebody, like, mirroring us for, like, weeks. Because if they do, man, I am gonna train mine like a retarded monkey. I'm gonna teach him all the bad things about help desk. I'm gonna make him really, really belligerent and dumb. It's gonna be awesome. I'm so excited if that happens. He's like, if I can mold somebody into my own image, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna mold them into the image the company hates. Like all the stuff that I see my coworkers doing that drive me nuts, I'm gonna teach this guy every single step just like that. It's gonna be friggin' classic. But, uh, you know. Bet you wouldn't believe it's 3.43 right now, judging by the nice color in the sky. Look at this day. And here Easy Funshine mentioned on a video a while back that she was all scared with me driving in the snow thinking I'm going to get into an accident. Well, the snow kind of frigged off a lot. Stay there, bud. Oh, shit. Here I thought the bus was stopping to let off traffic, not to let somebody cross. Whoops. Oh, I made a new e-juice today. I did the orange and the uh, graham, uh, the graham cracker. No, orange and the uh, cheesecake again. I freaking love this kind. This is delicious. So I was chatting with my buddy about the, the whole problem with vaping in the car. Now it sticks to the windshield. And he told me basically what I need is some fog away. Basically, it, ba it breaks down the vegetable glycerin as it hits your windshield. So you just don't have to deal with it. And that's exactly what I want, is something to uh, destroy the windshield, uh, destroy the windshield, no, destroy the vape so it doesn't stick. And he's like, it's the same shit you can put inside your goggles and it keeps your windows from fogging up. So I need to try that. I want to try it on a small test surface and then just start blowing vape right at it and seeing what happens. Because if I could like calm down this whole vape sticking to my window scene, life would be glorious. Glorious life indeed. Skittle deedle dee. Holy shit. I was going to go this way, but that Chevy's taking up the whole fucking driveway. Jesus. Learn to drive, you goof. Holy fuck, man. I can't even go anywhere. Fucking Ursul's everywhere trying to get out and driving down the street right in the dead center. Like a bunch of fucking idiots. There's like nowhere in the front to park. 
Now, maybe there's not an asshole taking up the whole goddamn lane and I can actually pull in here. If there is, I'm gonna fucking smash into them. Chances are there's a bunch of arseholes from the other building parked in the do not park until after 345 spots, but that's what they do. Oh well, next year that'll be the least of my problems. I won't have a job or any income, so that'll be a new problem to fucking deal with it probably. We'll figure it out. We always do. It's the way she goes. But anyway, people, I'm going to head inside and get this shift over with. So uh, thanks for watching my video. Remember, airsofts aren't toys and all our snow's gone. Right on. And until next time, people, don't forget to leave a comment for commenting on comments. You never know. You could be in the show. Um, also, uh, like the video if you liked it. And favorite if you favorite it. I don't care. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging.